Hello everyone. In this video, I will go over my solution to the problem named number of shortest paths taken from today's encoder beginner contest. This problem will teach you how to modify the breadth first search algorithm to find the number of shortest paths from node 1 to node n. And obviously, if we mention the breadth first search algorithm, we'll automatically find the length of the shortest path. But in this problem, we learn how to modify this standard algorithm to not only find the length, but also the number of shortest paths. So this problem has a very small problem statement. We are given an undirected graph with n nodes and m edges. And what we need to do is we need to find the number of shortest paths from 1 to n. So in the first sample test case, we are given n is 4 nodes and we have five edges and we need to find the number of shortest paths from one to four. So let's store these two values which I mentioned, the shortest path and the number of shortest paths. So we know that the shortest path from one to itself is just zero and the number of shortest paths is one because there's only one way to stay at one. The number of shortest paths to node uh, 3 will be 1 and the length of the shortest path will be 1 and similarly to node 2 the shortest path will be just this and hence the length of the shortest path is 1 and the number of shortest paths is also 1. However to go to 4 there are two ways in which we can reach 4 either from 2 or from 3 so that's why there are two shortest paths from 1 to 4 and the length of the shortest path is 2. So our answer for this sample test case is just 2. In the fourth sample test case, we are given a graph with 7 nodes and 8 edges. And again, let's use the same idea of storing the length of the shortest path and the number of the shortest paths. So for node 1, the length of the shortest path is 0 and the number of shortest paths is 1. For node 3, the length of the shortest path is 1 and the number of shortest paths is 1. And similarly for 4, the pair will be 1, 1. For node 2, notice that there are two ways in which we can go to node 2, either from 3 or from 4, and both will give us the shortest path. Hence, we'll compute the distance to be 2 and the number of shortest paths to be 2. And when we consider node 6, then again note that we consider the edge from 2 to 6 and since there were two ways to reach node 2 there will also be two ways to reach node 6 and the length is 3 and similarly for node 5 since there were two ways to reach node 2 we know that there will be two shortest paths and again the length will be 3 and note that to reach node 7 there are two ways either we came from 5 or we came from 6 and since both will give us the same shortest path of 4 we add these two values to give us the number of shortest paths to be 4 and that's our final answer. So let's formalize the logic which we saw in the sample test cases by making three key observations. The first observation is that we can easily find the shortest path from one to every other node using the standard breadth first search algorithm. However, we also need to find the number of shortest paths. Hence, we'll store two values for every node, which are the distance from one to that node and the number of shortest paths from one to that node, as we did in the sample test cases. Now, let's figure out how do we update these two values. So first, we can update distance of i easily in the breadth first search by using the normal BFS idea. And that is if the distance to the node V is greater than the distance uh, from the node U plus 1, then we basically update distance of V to be distance of U plus 1 and we push V to the Q. And this is the standard breadth for search which we normally do. However, let's figure out a way to update num of i in the same breadth for search. So let's change this logic a bit to compute the number of shortest paths. So again, we take the u 
to be the top of the queue and we'll again use if the distance of v becomes greater than the distance is uh, originally greater than the distance of u plus 1 then again we relax the distance of v to be 1 plus the distance of u and we push v to the queue however we make one key change and this is important for computing the number of shortest paths so this change is motivated by the fact that all the shortest paths from node 1 to node v will come to you so all the shortest paths will look like this will uh, so they will basically go from 1 to u and then they'll directly go to v because of this statement so this statement actually implies this that all the shortest paths start from 1 they go to u and then they go to v and hence the number of shortest paths to v is just equal to the number of shortest paths to u so that's our first change the second change is that if the distance to v is the same as distance to u this means that there are some shortest paths from v fr from u which end up at v so there are some shortest paths from 1 to u and then the path from u to v which is basically one edge is also a shortest path however there can be more shortest paths so there can be other nodes let's say u2 and u3 and so on which all also have the same which also will give the same distance to v and hence we just increase the number of shortest paths to v by the number of shortest paths to u so the fact that there are num u shortest paths so there are num u shortest paths from 1 to u and all these shortest paths will also be a shortest path to v and hence we basically increase num of v by num of u so to understand why this works we'll do exactly what I just said we'll basically compute distance of v to be equal to distance of u plus 1 if u gives a shorter distance and we'll update num of v to be equal to num of u because we know that all shortest paths from 1 to v must come through u and similarly in the second case or in the second change we know that if the distance of v is equal to distance of u plus 1 then there are num u shortest paths which come through u and go to v and these are the extra shortest paths which we didn't count before and hence we basically increase num of v by this num of u and that's all that's there in our algorithm so let's quickly look at the code in the code i take in the values of n and m which are the number of nodes and the number of edges then I have three vectors. The first one is the adjacency list. The second one is the distances. And the third one is the number of shortest paths. Then I basically read in the graph and I initialize distance of the first node to be zero, number of shortest paths to the first node to be one. And I basically add one to the queue. Then I do the breadth for search. And in the end, I basically print the number of shortest paths to node n. So in the breadth first search, as I mentioned, we'll take u to be the top value in the queue. And for each adjacent node v, we'll do the two steps. The first step is setting distance of v to be equal to distance of u plus 1 if v had a greater distance. And this is because we know all shortest paths must go through u and then reach v. And hence, we basically push v to the queue and we set number of shortest paths of v to be equal to number of shortest paths to u and similarly when we have distance of v to be equal to distance of u plus 1 we know that there are num u shortest paths which go through u and then reach v and which we have not yet considered hence we just do num v plus equals num of u and we do all of this under mod which is uh, 10 to the 9 plus 7 so let's just submit this code to see that it gets accepted. So as you could see, my code got accepted. I hope you like this problem and my solution to this problem. 
as you could see this problem taught us how to modify the breadth force search algorithm to find not only the length of the shortest path but also the number of shortest paths which was exactly what the problem was asking us to do so thank you for watching this video